Sunday of May. We are here to praise God on, on this virtual Sunday. We give you greetings from myself and Lady Campbell from, and also from the Crossover Baptist Church where we believe in giving God praise. Amen. We thank you uh, uh, on today. We thank you and everybody who's been supporting us uh, throughout this whole uh, uh, virtual uh, church uh, endeavor that we are in. We want to thank all our supporters who constant, constantly, constantly join in with us. You tune in with us and you share and you share and you share our videos and you share and you comment and you pray for us. And you also been sowing seed into our ministry. So we really just want to take this moment and say thank you for constantly supporting us and constantly showing us love and letting us know that we are doing our job and encouraging you through this nationwide uh, an unprecedented time. Amen. So we thank you. We thank and all our supporters out there on today. Uh, on today is first Sunday, first Sunday of the month, and we are normally taking our communion on the first Sunday of the month. So on today, we're going to have virtual communion Sunday, virtual communion Sunday. So if you haven't prepared for it, it's quite fine. You can um, just run and, and get you a, a, some crackers and some grape juice or something or uh, if you don't have grape juice, get orange juice, get some type of juice. We're still going to pray over it. We're still going to ask God to change it from its carnal use to its spiritual use. Amen. We're going to constantly, um, and, and after that, we're going to uh, pray and, and just give God glory. Amen. So um, also, let's keep in mind that our sick list is open. If you have somebody that you want us to pray for, you can inbox us through our uh, Facebook account and let us know the name of the person. You don't have to tell us what they are going through. You don't have to tell us their business. Just give us their name so that we can call their name out in the atmosphere and ask God to do something to, to bless them in a mighty way, to send a miracle their, their way. We don't have to know in detail because God already knows. So we just want to call their name out to touch and agree with you that God will do something in their lives. Amen. Let's not forget our Wednesday night is our inspirational talk and prayer time. We start at seven o'clock on our conference call on our conference call line. Um, the information for that is also on our social media pages where you can call up, put the pen number in, and once you join in and once we start. Uh, the, uh, the broadcast. Mute your phones, please. Mute your phones. Amen. Amen. I think I covered about everything that I need to cover. Now we want to go into the Word of God on today, which will be found in Matthew, the eighth chapter. We're going to start at verse 23. Matthew, the eighth chapter, verse 23. We're going to read down to the 26th verse. Amen. Matthew 8, chapter 23 through 26. I'm just waiting a little while because I know somebody probably ran to go get that crack and that juice prepared. Amen. So just give a few, few minutes and then uh, we're going to go right into it. Matthew 8, chapter 23 and 26. Um, if I could just set this up really quick. Um, what what uh, functioned me or what gave me a thought on today? was uh, throughout social media or, or anytime I spoke to a, another pastor or another minister or inspirational speaker, whatever you want to say, somebody that was doing something encouraging, the main uh, thought or the main, the main saying for the day was God is in control. It seems as though uh, the world needed to be um, encouraged to know that God is in control. Um, 
So, 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 so continue to hang in there. Continue to believe and trust him that even though you may seem like you're in this thing by yourself, you're not in it by yourself. God is with us. God is, 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 is still doing what he does best, and that's work things out for our good. Amen. So we're going to start at Matthew's, the eighth chapter, Matthew, the eighth chapter, 23, down to 26 verse, and it reads in this wise. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered. It was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us. We perish. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful? O ye of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the seas, and there was a great calm, and the word of the Lord is blessed. Is blessed. Once again, our subject for thought on today is God is in control. God is in control. Father, we thank you for this time, God. This time to come before your people, oh God, to break bread, to encourage their heart, to hold on another day, to hold on to your unchanging hand. God, we pray, God, that you will hide us behind the cross that you will give us the words to say. And when we open our mouths, you will speak for us, God. Give us your anointing, God, to give this word effectively in Jesus' name. Let God's people say amen. God is in control. Now, while reading this amazing story about Jesus with his disciples crossing the Sea of Galilee, I can't help but to see some similar uh, things going on in this story that was directly the mirror to our lives here on today. He said to them, he said to his disciples, come, get on this boat and let us go to the other side. Jesus is constantly taking us from one thing to another. He's always taking us from point A to point B and constantly taking us closer to our destiny and our divine purpose. You will find out that as long as you're following Christ, he will always be leading us to the other side. And the other side is clearly another side. And the other side is clearly another side after that. It's from point A to point B and to, point, and to point C, a place where you are definitely not at right now. So following Christ, you will adopt the phrase that we always say, I'm not where I want to be, but I thank God I'm not where I used to be. So he's constantly trying to eventually get us to our destiny. He's constantly trying to get us closer to him in our faith and our belief. So as they get in this boat, he said, come get in this boat, let us go to the other side. And behold, as they was on the ship going to the other side, the Bible says, behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea. Something happened in the midst of them going from one place to another. And that's just like life. Anytime you're going from one place to another or you're going from one level to another, you're going from uh, 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 one anointing to another, uh, uh, there's always something happening. There's always something interfering. There's always something that causes a resistance or causes us, causes us to uh, question the next level. When you're going from one level to another, you're already um, in fear factor or you're in, the, you're in the mindset of not, uh, uh, not sure of of the journey, but uh, and then the devil tries to um, impact that with some type of resistance. So as they was going from one place to the other, 
It says a, 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 a great tempest in the sea. A, take, a great tempest came out in the sea while they was going across. That word tempest is, is a, it's a violent, it means a violent storm that comes out of nowhere. One minute the sky is sunny and blue. The next minute you're in a life-changing storm. One minute everything is fine. The next thing you know, you're in a storm like none other. That's just like life. Everything will be going along fine. Everything's going along smoothly. And the next thing you know, out of nowhere, you're being hit with some outrageous situation. From one thing to the next, you, you're going from one point to another. And out of nowhere, uh, some bill come up when you was not planning on spending this amount of money on or doing this. Something always come up. That's why we always say, every time I turn around, I got to deal with something. Every time you're on the move and doing something for God, something will pop up out of nowhere, and it's always out of the unusual. It's always seem like it's not a regular situation, but it's on 10. Hallelujah. You look at somebody in the living room next to you and tell them God is in control. While on this journey, we, we are going to be faced with obstacles. While, while on this journey, we're going to be faced with different things that's going to cause resistance. Uh, while on this journey, we're going to be faced with hurdles. But just as we're faced with those things, those obstacles, we also will encounter miracles. We also will take on blessings. We also will get some victories along the way. You must understand that uh, uh, all these things, the hurdles and the miracles and the and the uh, resistance and the blessings, all these things are, are, are in our path only to help us get to uh, uh, get to who God has called us to be. All these things, uh, 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 the, the good and the bad, you know, if we could, we would just take the good, but we got to take the bad. Hallelujah. You must understand that it's all in the making of us. It's all in the making of who you need to be when you get to that next level. I don't want you to. I want you to know that. Uh, uh, don't uh, uh, have a, 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 a thought that why I gotta go through these things because uh, I say yes to God's will. No, you have to go through these things because anytime you go through things that's going to um, uh, uh, give you a resistance, but you have the motivation to keep moving, guess what? It's, it does nothing but makes you stronger as you go through. First Peter 4 and 12 says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened unto you. Don't sit around and have a woe is me party. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering. It's a blessing to go through as well. Because when you go through, that's when his glory shall be revealed. When you get through this situation, when you get over that hurdle, when you cross over that mountain, it says you may be glad also with exceeding joy. Yes, the storm came out of nowhere. Yes, the dilemma came out of nowhere. Yes. The trial wasn't expected. Whoever sits around and just expect the trial to come. Whoever sits around and just expect the phone to ring with bad news. But think it not strange. Hallelujah. Because uh, Romans 8 and 28 says, All things work together for good to them that love God. Hallelujah. Just because you love God. Hallelujah. Just because you love God you're going to be tried. Just because you love God, you're going to be tested. Just because you love God, you're going to be blessed. Just because you love God, you're going to encounter miracles. Just because you love God, it says, to them who are called according to his purpose. Why? Just because you love God. Hallelujah. If you love him, I need you to always know that he's in control. Thank you, Jesus. Let's move on with the story. The ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. His disciple came to him and awoke him. The ship was covered with waves. The ship had water coming uh, coming into uh, uh, into the the main the, into the ship. The ship was intaking water like never before, and the disciples began to get nervous. Disciples began to get uh, fearful. The ship was in 
uh, unusual situation. Hallelujah. But Jesus was asleep. And while Jesus was asleep, a panic came upon the, the, the disciples. The ship was in an unusual situation. The ship was dealing with something it had never dealt with before. Yes, the ship been out on the water, but this was a storm like never before. Uh, and Jesus was asleep and a panic came upon them and they awoke him. I come to realize in this walk with God, my uh, uh, I'm going to face some things that I have never faced before. I'm going to deal with some things that I never had to deal with before. Hallelujah. But I'm, I understand this also that in this walk, one thing you must understand is that your faith must match your trust in God. Your faith must match your trust in God. Why? Because it's your faith that says, I believe in you. So I trust you. It's your faith that lets God know that I trust you, Lord. So that means while I walk this walk of faith, there is nothing that can harm me because I trust in him. I got scripture to prove, to prove it. You look at um, Psalms 91 and 10. It says uh, in the NIV version, it says, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. No harm will overtake you. Nothing will come to your house. For he will command his angels concerning you. He will set an army around you. Hallelujah. To guard you in all your ways. Why? Because you trust him. Why? Because you know he's in control. It goes on to say, they will lift you up in their hands. The angels of God will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Hallelujah. They will lift you up in their hands to keep you from hurting yourself. They will lift you up in your in their hand. They will guard you from not just you hurting yourself, but from allowing people to hurt you also. He, they will protect you. Hallelujah. Job says it best when he says 13 and 15, he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Hallelujah. In other words, though I'm going through, my faith says trust in the Lord with all my heart. Though it feels like I'm losing my mind, uh, uh, the rest of the scripture says lean not to thy own understanding. You might be in a storm right now, but your faith should tell you God is in control. They woke up. They woke him up saying, Lord, save us. They, they, woke, they woke Jesus up saying, Lord, save us. We, we perish. They woke up. Jesus saying, Lord, save us. We perish. They woke up Jesus saying, Lord, save us. We perish. They in a situation. You got God with you. You got Jesus with you. That alone is your safety net. That alone, having Jesus with you, says that we are not going to be harmed. That alone, having Jesus with is when you don't have Jesus with you is when you got to worry. But long as you got Jesus with you, you don't have to worry. He don't have to be awoken. He don't have to be standing right forefront. But long as he right with you. But they said, Lord, save us. For we perish. That word perish speaks to their existence um, in their own eyes. That word perish shows where their, where their faith was. When you look up perish, these words are found uh, where it says to suffer death. Uh, 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 it says to uh, destroy. It says finished. Nothing, uh, nothing has physically happened to them yet, but they are in a panic. They are fearful. They said, save us uh, for we perish. They already speak in their end. Hallelujah. While they're in their present, they already speak in their end. There's so much power in our mouth. There's so much power that we can speak things and that's what they will be because uh, uh, you're going to speak what's in the heart. So if you speak 
what's in the heart and you have Jesus, which is in your heart, you should be speaking victory over that situation. You should be speaking that I am more than a conqueror over that situation. You should be speaking that no weapon form shall be pros shall prosper. You should not be speaking, Lord, save us because we perish. Save us because we're about to be destroyed. This statement shows their level of faith. It shows their level of faith. And then on top of that, Jesus himself, after he's been awakened, he tells them their level of faith. He says, why are you fearful? O ye of little faith, why are you fearful? O ye of little faith, why are you afraid? Why are you afraid of the storm? Why are you afraid of the enemy's trickery? Why are you afraid of this, this virus? Why are you afraid of this uh, economic crisis? How, why are you afraid of this sickness? Why are you afraid of this situation? Why are you afraid of the different trials and situations? Why are you afraid? Oh, ye of little faith. It's almost like he's asking the question, but he's giving you the answer. Why are you afraid? Oh, because you have a little faith. That's why you're afraid. Mark 5 and 36 says, be not afraid, only believe believe. Be not afraid, only have faith. Be not afraid and know that I'm in control. Be not afraid because I'm on the ship. Be not afraid. Be not afraid because God is in control. Look at your neighbor or somebody that's in the house with you say, God is in control. And if you're not in the house with anybody, just tell yourself, God is in control. God is in control. Thank you, Jesus. He stood in the midst of chaos. He rebuked the winds. He stood in the midst of chaos and he rebuked the seas. He stood in the midst of chaos and commissioned or, or declared that everything come to an end. Everything come to a peace. And there was a great calm upon the sea. Look at the order in which he did the rebuking. First, he rebuked them. He rebuked the disciples. He said, oh, ye of little faith. Like, come on, really? Then he rebuked the winds. And, 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 then, and then the winds and the waves, they calmed down. He had to rebuke man first to take away the fear that blinded their faith. To show them to fear not what I control. Fear not what I control. Fear not what I'm in control of. It's out of your hands. It's nothing you can do about it. So why are you standing around being fearful of something you have no control over? You have no control over it. He said, fear not what I control. Understand this, God is never surprised by our circumstance. Why? Because he's in control. He wasn't surprised by the persecution of the early church. He wasn't surprised by the world wars that happened. He wasn't surprised by the plagues and the measles and the mumps. He wasn't surprised by the smallpox and the swine flu. He wasn't surprised by this COVID-19. He wasn't surprised by what you did last month. He wasn't surprised about what you did last week or what you did last night. He was not surprised because God is in control. And if you're going to walk with God, you're going to have to trust him when you can't trace him. You're going to have to trust him when you can't see your way out. You're going to have to trust him and know that he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Why? Because God is always in control. Romans 8 and 31, hallelujah, says, what shall we then say to these things? What shall you say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. Don't go and tell God about your problems, but go tell your problems about your God. Why? Because God is in control. God don't need to hear it. He already know about it. It's like how we say to somebody who's trying to tell us about God. You say, you're preaching to the choir. And so God is saying that to you. Don't come Come tell me about it. I already know about it. I'm in control. Why? Oh, ye of little faith. Oh, ye of little faith. Why are you so fearful? 
Why are you so fear, fearful? Don't you know that I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, whose mind is stayed on me? Hallelujah, because he trusts in thee. Show God that you trust him by keeping your mind on him. Show God that you trust him by not wavering. Show God that you trust him by not getting fearful and frustrated. Hallelujah. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence and say, man, are you, that's, uh, uh, when I see that scripture, I think about how we get into crisis and we always turn to man. We get into situations and we always go into man. Well, uh, even in this uh, 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 COVID or coronavirus, we go to the social media. We we go to the TV and, 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 and Andrew Cuomo every day, listen to what he's saying instead of going to God. And see what God say. What does God say? Hallelujah. That should be your motive of the day. Every time you wake up and put your two feet on the floor, you should say, okay, what does God say today? Hallelujah, because God is in control. I come to tell somebody, you may, I want to encourage you on today, you may be going through some trials uh, on top of trials and, and this virus situation, and you feeling like you're about to lose your everlasting mind. You, you're holding on by the strands of the strings that, the, that are un, untwine, untwining. You're holding on by, the, by just a little bit, and you're ready to give up. I want you to know there's a song that they have out that says, uh, 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 in thee, O oh Lord, I put my trust. Why? Because God is in control. I know it's been hard. I know it's been frustrated. But in thee, O oh Lord, I put my trust. Trust. I wish I. I wish I could sing it. I wish I could. I wish I was a singer that could sing that for you right now. But being that I'm not a singer, only thing I could tell you: put your trust in God. I believe the writer of this song had to be going through something that was breaking him down of his very being. It had. It, he had nothing left but his last praise that says, "I have nothing left, but in Thee I put my trust." I can't see my way out, but in thee, I put my trust. Everything seems like it's going wrong in my life, but in thee, I put my trust. Hallelujah. I went to the bank account and it said something that I didn't want to see, but in thee, I put my my trust. I don't know what this virus thing is going to do. I don't know if it's going to ever let up, but in thee, I put my trust. Not in man, but in thee, I put my trust. Not in no other gods, but in thee, I put my trust. I was about to lose my life, but in thee, I put my trust. Hallelujah. Every morning that I woke up and I opened my eyes, it was in thee that I put my trust. I realize that it's in him that I live and I have my being because it's in him that I put my trust. I don't know who I come to talk to on today, but I want to encourage you on today to hold on to God and don't give up because God is in control. I know it don't seem like it, but I'm telling you, as God is my witness, God, he is in control. Hallelujah. If I had to turn to the Bible, there's a couple of witnesses there that will let you know on today that God is in control. There's a woman who suffered with an issue of blood. I can only imagine that when she made up in her mind, mind that she was going to push through that crowd, that she had the mindset that said, in thee I put my trust her. Huh? Hallelujah. There was three soldiers, three gentlemen, hallelujah, in the Bible by the name of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. And no matter what uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar said, they said, in thee I put my trust. Nebuchadnezzar said, turn the fire up seven times harder. I can imagine they said, in thee I put 
put my trust. As they begin to march into that furnace, I can imagine they begin to sing even louder. In thee I put my trust. There was a man by the name of Blind Bartimaeus sitting on the side of the road. I can imagine him sitting there saying, I can't see nothing, but in thee I put my trust. All I know is to put my trust in God. Why? Because the fact that I'm still here today preaching to you and sharing this word, that the only reason why I'm here is because in thee I put my trust. In thee I put my trust. Because God is in control. Why would I put my trust in anybody else? Why would I put my trust in anything else when it was God who brought me safely this far? And it's going to be God to take me on further. So the only thing I got to do is to continue to trust God and believe, hallelujah, that he didn't bring me this far to leave me. I wish I had somebody right now that believed in this word that would begin to lift up your hands and begin to give God some praise right now. Wherever you are, hallelujah, wherever you're sitting, oh, get up out of your seat and begin to give God some praise. Begin to anoint your house with praise, even right now. Let God know that he's in control, not just of you, but your whole house. Let God know that he's in control of everything that you trust, everything that you touch. Let God know that you are that you are trusting him, hallelujah, and never doubt hallelujah oh god let god know hallelujah that he is the head of your life let god know by your praise and your worship come on give him praise come on give him worship come on lift him up come on y'all could do better than that Let's set this airway on fire. Let's let let's set this internet on fire today. Hallelujah. Come on and give them praise. Somebody wanted to give up, but you are hallelujah encouraged on today to know that God is in control. He didn't bring you this far to leave you. He didn't bring you this far. We're almost out of this situation. All you got to do is continue to give God praise. Continue doing what you've been doing. Don't give up now. Don't slack up now. Hallelujah. You got to apply more pressure. You got to push harder. You got to continue to praise until something happened. Come on. God is in control right now. He sent this word especially for you. Hallelujah. To give God praise. To uh, Hallelujah. To let you know uh, that you're going to make it. I pray, to, I pray and preach that I speak to that person now that's been burdened by depression. I speak to that person right now. Hallelujah. That's been feeling like they just want to throw in a towel. Hallelujah. Don't throw in that towel on today. Know that God sent this word for you on today. Letting you know that he's right there with you. Letting you know that you can make it. God is in control of this situation. He's with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praise for that word. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, as the people of God are praising you right now, God. God, we want to pray, God, hallelujah, that you will continue to encourage your people. We want to pray, God, that you will continue, God, to encourage our young and our youth, God, as they are home, God, going through this situation with us, God, as they are doing the work and the schoolwork on the computers, God. Keep them focused, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We want to pray, God, that you will touch and anoint every household that is, hallelujah, covered or spoken over with this word, God, with your blood, God of protection, your blood of love, your blood of comfort, your blood of providing, God, whatever the need is, God, we speak to it right now, God. Oh, meet the need, God. Take away the lack, God. In the name of Jesus, whatever the need is, God, we pray, God, that you will go straight to that need, God, for we know, God, that you can be everything that we need you to be, for you said, I am that I am. 
So whatever the situation is, you can be that. Hallelujah. So if somebody needs strength, God, we know that you can be that. If somebody needs healing, we know that you can be that. If somebody needs to be uplifted, we know that you can be the uplifter. If somebody needs, hallelujah, a hug, God, we know that you can hug them, God. Whatever they need, God, you can do that. And we pray on tonight, God. Or we pray on this evening or this morning, God, whenever they are listening to this uh, broadcast, oh, that you would touch them even now, God. Touch them with your finger of love. Somebody feeling like they're by themselves. Somebody feeling like no one loves them. We pray right now, God, for your loving arms, God. Oh, to encamp around about them, God. In the name of Jesus, let them know that you're there with them. Let them know that you love them. Oh, God, as we pray on this prayer, God, we want to pray for the families, God that sent their names in God, the William family, the Beckett family, God. Pray, we pray for the Hall family. Pray for the Collins family. We pray for the Sunbury, the Sunbury family. We pray for the Wilson family, the Flowers family, the Stokes family, Zimmerman family, the Gadsden family, uh, the Branch family, the Lucent family, the Farmers and Brown family, Carl and Lenore Hopkins, uh, Middleton family. We pray for Greg, uh, Gary Benson, God. Uh, we pray for uh, the Shula, Shula family. We pray for Streeter family. We pray for the Smith family. We pray for the Campbell family. We pray, hallelujah, for all the families, God. Hallelujah. We pray, hallelujah, for uh, the, the, the Hill family, God. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, for the Crossover Baptist Church family, God. We pray that you will continue to hold these families together. We pray that you will continue, God, to um, uh, 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 join them together in unity and love, God. We pray, God, that wherever the need is, God, that you will be there with them, God, to uplift them and lead them, God, continue to order their steps, God. We thank you, God, for this time of prayer, God. And on today, God, if there's someone watching that is not saved, we pray that you will raise your hands right now and repeat after me. Father, I believe that you died for me and I believe that you rose for me. God, I pray right now that you will forgive me of my sins, God. Forgive me of my sins aware of and unaware of. God, order my steps. Come into my life. Take control over my life. Save me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Come on, let's begin to give God some praise. Let's begin to give God some glory. Come on, lift him up. Tell him hallelujah. Tell him thank you, Jesus. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the praise. Huh? Come on, clap your hands and give him praise. Come on, clap your hands and give him praise. Oh, glory, we thank you, God. We thank you once again. We want to thank everyone, hallelujah, that always support us. We're about to do our communion service part of the of the, of, of, of the day. Um, but before we go, we want to give out our, our, um, our information. If you want to sow seed into this ministry, as you have been doing, we want to say thank you because you guys have been doing so well. Hallelujah. We want to give you the information so you can continue to be blessed and send in your names to our inbox on our Facebook. Please send in your names so that we can continue to lift you up in prayer, that God will continue to bless you as you bless his house. So we thank you. We thank you mightily. Once again, if you want to give via the Zelle app, you can do us do so by um, our information is crossover bc358 at yahoo.com. Crossover bc358 at yahoo.com. And those of you that have Cash App, you can also uh, uh, sow a seed through Cash App, which is dollar sign J-A-M-A-U-R-92. Once again, that's dollar sign J-A-M-A-U-R-92. Come on, let's give God some praise. Um, we thank you once again for, for sowing seed. We thank you again for believing in us and trusting that God is using us to speak right directly to you, right where you are in your situation. Let's also remember all our members to pay your tithes and your offering through those venues. And you also know that we also, uh, you can schedule a pickup. Our deacons will come around and um, pick up uh, what you need them to pick up. So please, let's not try to run our deacons to death. They're doing an awesome job. We thank God for Deacon Benson and the, and the, and the deacon, deacon Board doing an awesome job doing this um, uh, uh, 
quarantine situation. Um, I'm giving y'all time to get ready for the communion while we're getting ready to do that. Amen. So those of you that have to get ready, uh, let's let's get ready to um, do our communion. Let's put on some worship music real quick while we're getting ourselves ready to do worship. Worship. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, we're going to read from Matthew 26, chapter, as we go into... We'll give you a couple of minutes. They shall run and not be weak. But as we give you a couple of minutes, we just want to remind you. I know a lot of times people say they're not going to take communion for this reason or that reason. But God already paid the price. He already took the cross up Golgotha's hill. He already paid the price so that you can walk in his will and his way freely. So when it comes down to communion, it's a, it's a, it's a I would say, a, a thing of a formality to surrender totally to God. It's a time where we can ask God for forgiveness and give us a clean slate. Hallelujah. Clean slate. So you can ask for forgiveness and really mean it from your heart. Remember, God already knows. He already knows what you've done. He already knows what you're going to do. But I promise you, if you make an honest effort in turning your life around, God will honor you even more. Amen. Nobody's perfect. From the pulpit to the door, we all have struggles and issues. But the good thing is that we don't stop. We, when we get knocked down, we get back up, we brush ourselves off, and we try again until we did it right. So on today, we're going to be taking our communion, and we're going to give you a few minutes, a few seconds, to ask for forgiveness. Hallelujah. So we're going to take this time to ask for forgiveness. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, God, in this communion portion of service. First of all, thanking you for what you've done on Golgotha's hill. Thanking you for paying the price for us, God. And God, as we get ready to take communion, God, we pray, God, that you will make us worthy of this task by forgiving us for our sins. Forgive us for our sins, aware of and unaware of, God. Give us clean hands and a pure heart. Forgive us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The book of Matthew, the 26th chapter, it reads in this wise. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, hallelujah. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine, until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And the word of God is blessed. We thank God for his word. Hallelujah. Now, God, we want to pray over this cracker and this juice, God, that represents your body and your blood. God, we pray that you will change this cracker to uh, from, a, from a, a natural use to a spiritual use. God, we pray to God that you will take this juice and change it from a natural use to a spiritual use, God. 
We thank you for shedding your blood. We thank you, God, for sacrificing your body. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. So we want everybody to get their cracker. Hallelujah. Hold it up in your right hand of power. He said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat. Let's eat together. In the same manner, he took the cup. This is my blood, which is shed for you. Let us drink together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. And the rest of the story said they went to their separate olives, uh, mountain, their separate mountain of olives. We don't have a mountain of olives to go to on today, but we do have our separate homes to stay in. Hallelujah. <laughs> to stay in and give God glory and to give God praise. Listen, we thank you once again for joining in with Crossover Baptist Church. We love you. We love you. We love you. Have a blessed evening in Jesus' name. Amen.